Good evening, and welcome to tonight's episode of Reese's Home Reviews. We will be discussing a film that features a fear of fright. Three brothers of the same kind. The sound of screams in the air! And no, I'm not talking about the live-action Chipmunks movie. I'm actually going to talk about the 1999 director video film, Alvin and the Chipmunks Meet Frankenstein. <laughs> In the late 90s and early 2000s, Universal teamed up with Bagdad Syrian Productions to make two directed video films about the chipmunks meeting up with Universal Monsters, those being Frankenstein and Wolfman. But today we'll be looking at Frankenstein for now. Although this will be the only time they team up due to a lawsuit between the two companies because of control handling. But I'm not going to talk about it now, it's Halloween and we should sit down and watch something a bit spooky and fun at the same time. So let us get through this Halloween night with Alvin and the Chipmunks meet Frankenstein. We begin with a backstory of Frankenstein's monster causing havoc around the local village. Oh, and by the way, just to clarify the confusion between the names of the characters, here's a clip to understand this confusion. Frankenstein was the creator, not the monster. It's a common misconception held by all truly stupid people. Now we must leave this place and start all over. <laughs> Luckily, I have a spare. Cut to years later, as we see the chipmunks performing a concert at a theme park named Majestic Movie Studios, which is basically a spoof of Universal Studios Hollywood if you think about it. The songs on this are good, they're fun to listen to and hummable, but can't you get when you watch an animated flick? There's a werewolf! Now that's a foreshadowing for the next film. After the show's over, the Chimunks have an hour to spare for the next one. So Alvin wants to go to Dragonland, which is an indoor roller coaster. I don't want to go to Dragonland! It's scary! No, 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 no. Not scary. The ruins! Dragonland is scary. Maybe for you, but for someone who's younger than you, it would probably be scary for him. Meanwhile, the manager of the theme park hires Dr. Frankenstein to help give the castle attraction more excitement. What and how did he survive all these years? I'll never find out. Please, this way. And be careful. Seriously, be careful. Let me keep striking when it happens. There you go, you did it again. The two monks decide to take a tour bus to get there, as the tour guide man literally named tour guide on the cast page. You really need to start naming people, mate. Does what all tour guides does, talk about the sets, famous celebrities who did this, and talking about his favourite scenes in a not interesting way. Well, it's a much better dramatic performance than Chipwreck. You little beaver or muskrat or whatever you are! Don't touch the cat! Oh no, that's his trigger word! He's gonna kill someone! Actually, Alvin starts to take control of the tour bus, driving recklessly until getting kicked out and stranded in the middle of a set. I don't want to rain on your parade, but our show, we've got plenty of time. And by time, you mean you won't make it back at all. Cause by then the show gets cancelled, causing the manager to call Days of Bale, panicking over the chipmunks' disappearance. I assure you that the chipmunks are professionals. It's not like them to be late. Who am I kidding? Late is Alvin's middle name. I'd better get to the theme park and see if I can find them. Unfortunately, the park is closed by then, as the Chipmunks are now trapped inside. Hey, look! Somebody's still here! Alvin! Cut it out! You know it scares me! Do it again and I won't go kids on you! I promise that! They enter into a room where Dr. Frankenstein is preparing to bring back life of his creature. I think he will make it frightening enough, don't you? He's gonna be very popular. He does the usual lightning to give it live and say the iconic line My baby's alive! He's done it everybody! He said the line! 
But the chipmunks soon get spotted and he sends the creature to go chase after them. So the creature hates children's mascot songs. Alright, I got no problem with that. Meanwhile, Dave gets inside the park to look around for the chipmunks, only to meet up with Dr. Frankenstein, who tries to knock him out for his experiments. Gee, I, I didn't realize how big the park is. Thanks for your hospitality, but I, I really better be going. I'm gonna check at home. Maybe they're already back there. Very well. Thanks again. Come again! And bring your kidneys! Kidneys! No, I mean your kids' kidneys! Oh, I'm going down. Back with the chipmunks, they decide to hide in Dragonland roller coaster, but the creature has already located them, causing the three brothers to jump on the ride. What's scarier, an animatronic fire-breathing dragon, or an actual monster behind their seats? Now I think the second part's more scarier. That doesn't sound good. The two snaps as the roller coaster is going so fast it makes the chipmunks morph into their past designs. That's a cute gag, I like it. They made it out alive and got back home just in time for Dave to scold them for being out too late. But just then, Fido notices his teddy bear is missing. I, I must have dragged him! Well, we're not going back for him. But if we did, then this of course leads into song number two as they sing about, oh excuse me, rap about what would they do if they see a monster. Now I know this was made in 1999 with those rapping attitudes as well as a Terminator reference. Huh. Well, it's not as bad as the other references they made in the live-action films. I can't believe this has happened again! Why does history keep repeating itself? Honestly, it sucks! It turns out that the creature has wandered off to the chipmunks' house to give back Theodore's teddy bear. Change of heart, I guess? But when Alvin and Simon wake up the next morning, they find something unusual on the Fiedel's blanket. Well, what do you see? That there's a lot of blood on Fiedel's bed, yet he's a goner. I don't get it. If he's such a big, lovable lug, then why was he trying to kill us? Perhaps taking you back to the castle and use you for science, which you might die in the process. What's even stranger than that is that the film takes a change in tone as they now try to teach the creature how to be nice. Wait, what did he call the creature again? Give it back, Frankie! Frankie? Ugh, oh, here we go again. else finds this song a bit familiar to girls with one iPhone? I know it's not a cover, but it just sounds familiar. As they arrive home, Dr. Frankenstein notices the chipmunks hanging out with the creature, so he swipes Alvin without even noticing, leaving only Alvin's cat behind. into a mindless zombie. Have you ever seen a mindless zombie? Are you kidding? I live in Hollywood! No joke, he's actually on the Hollywood Walk of Fame to prove it. 
As the Doctor gives the potion to Alvin and sets him up for the lightning effect, the three friends arrive at the castle, but it looks like the door is shut hard. Smash! Thankfully, the machine exploded due to a leak. Simon grabs the book, frees Alvin, and runs out of the castle to safety. Alvin, what did the doctor give you to drink? I don't know. Cartoon monster maker frappe. Serve cold with 50,000 volt chaser. Then wait three minutes. But it looks like the effect is starting to wear on as Alvin is now transformed into a wacky, loony character you would mostly find in Warner Brothers cartoons. They find a spell that can hopefully turn Alvin back to normal, but it turns out they can't seem to figure out where to get the ingredients from. Hey! The buffet table! Theodore, this is hardly the time for a snack. No! It's the antidote! Look! Caviar! Frog legs! Beef tongue! Ugh! I don't want to have that for my dinner, that's for sure! As they hurry to finish the antidote, Alvin is continuously causing havoc to many guests, including one of celebrities attending the park. You could get yourself hurt! Actually, that could be a good thing for me! At last, Simon and Theodore toss the liquid to Alvin, causing him to turn back to his normal self and got down safely. Fabulous! Oh, it was fabulous! Best publicity stunt I've ever seen! Especially the part where you scream like a girl! Huh? You know, I think everyone screams like a girl sometimes, just not all the time. At the stage, Dr. Frankenstein disguised himself as Sammy, the studio's mascot, to try and sabotage the concert. Unfortunately, the creature finds out about it and accidentally electrocutes him. But the audience still fears him as a monster, thus Fiddle tells everyone he is truly kind inside. You do realise we do judge a book by its colour, no matter how good or bad it is, so it's very misleading in certain ways. Anyway, it wins the audience over as Frankie is now accepted as one of their own, and works at the theme park as a guidance tour. But what happened to Dr. Frankenstein? Well, due to the electrical shock, he is stuck inside the suit forever. No! No! I'm trapped! I'm doomed! Doomed to be semi squalor forever! Truth be told, it would be fun, but it would be very hard to see, so that sucks. Glad I don't work at theme parks. So that is Alvin and the Chipmunks meet Frankenstein. It's pretty good for what it is, a Frankenstein story with the chipmunks involved in it. But it does set the Halloween mood right, although the tone changing can be a bit distracting. Besides that, I can say it's a nice little film to watch on Halloween with its characters, animation, and songs. In total, this movie gets a 7 out of 10 in my opinion, and I recommend checking it out. Thank you for watching today's review, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all- Oh, by the way, BOOM!